I think we are ready to roll. So let's begin this meeting of the Massachusetts State Athletic Commission Medical Advisory Board. Um, and I expect it'll be a relatively uh, brief meeting because this is one, uh, will be a very important item on the agenda. So uh, let's just go around the room and um, everybody who's present here, please state your name. Go this way. Dr. Jeremiah Lowney, uh, board member. Uh, Dr. Edgar Bellina, former chair, chairman of the Medical Advisory Board. Uh, Jennifer Fraga, program coordinator for AMSAC. Hi, my name is John High. I'm the assistant legal counsel for DPL. Going to be working with you all moving forward. I'm Natasha Bellatier, director of licensing. Guy Lachati. Singular. Uh, Dr. Louis Durkin, medical advisory board member. All right, thank you. Uh, I think we have a quorum for the uh, medical advisory board members. And uh, I, before we begin, and I think I should say this every time, I want to thank the physicians that come here um, because this is a volunteer uh, position. We're, we're not getting paid for this. And some come for, at great distances, sometimes for a short meeting like this. So it's tremendously appreciated. Um, moving right on to business here. Um, so. There is a proposal to approve the minutes from the March uh, 23rd meeting. However, I reviewed them, and there are some uh, important omissions. And what I'm going to do, so we're not even going to vote on approving it, I'm going to email uh, all the people uh, who, are, who need to be emailed on this to add back in those couple of pieces that are missing, mm -hmm. and then we can sort of approve it you know, by email, if, if, if that's acceptable. Uh, approval at the next the meeting. next meeting. Or we can meeting. approve it at the next meeting. Yep. Okay, very good. Um, thanks for clarifying that. So moving on to um, the uh, uh, item number three, review draft of informed consent, in quotes, for amateur unarmed combatants who request to opt out of certain medical requirements uh, in uh, 523 CMR 6.02. And um, everybody should have a draft uh, which is titled Amateur Unarmed Combatant Medical Waiver. Who does not have that? Okay, so we're all set with that. Um, I've reviewed this, and I have two suggestions um, for, for modifying it. So the title, um, Amateur Unarmed Combatant Medical Waiver, I would like to change the title to Amateur Unarmed Combar Com Combatant informed consent medical waiver. I know it's a mouthful, but I think it's more accurate, and that was our intent. When I just, yeah, I was gonna say, we're not just asking them to waive, we're, we're informing them uh, as to the risks involved in waiving. Yeah. I, I agree. Uh, um, yeah, because the informed consent are, I mean, they're, they're big words, and you know, they, they actually imply a whole lot, not only if you tell them, but the unspoken part of that, you, they they were told the risks. They have the capacity to understand the risks, and they have the capacity or the capacity to give consent. Or in this case, it's it's really um, an important refusal. Uh, but it, it it covers a big big concept in medicine, and I think we really need to include it because that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish with this document. <coughs> just to let you know. You know, this is what we would normally recommend you do, but we think at least in these cases you have the right to waive it as long as you understand the risks and benefits of that. I completely agree with you. Uh, the, the second and final change that I'd like to re recommend is in the last paragraph, I hereby release MAB, MSAC, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, its agents, servants, and employees from any and all claims and liabilities that may arise out of my decision to opt out of the minimum medical tests recommended by the MAB. I would like to insert in there, even though it might be implied, for example, uh, for some of the physicians in the MAB, the Medical Advisory Board, uh, or its agents, some of the ringside physicians, I'd like to see it clearly stated that it includes the ringside physicians that are working at such events. Um, you know, who, who don't have the benefit in the vast majority of cases of examining these um, fighters. Uh, well, they do examine them right before the fight, but they don't have the chance to review the medical records. So they don't know whether these tests occurred or not. And they don't know whether you know, they're being put 
um, uh, increase risk of not being able to properly care for the fighter should something go wrong. So, um, you know, so I suggest that I hereby release a wording to the effect of I hereby release MAB, MSAC, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, ringside physician, uh, no, its agents, servants, and employees, and ringside physicians from any and all claims, et cetera. Yeah, Dr. Bellinas. Yes, yes, thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, could you also put Kate side? I mean, there is a distinction these days of ringside versus Kate side, so just to make it more even specific, ringside slash Kate side. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think, yeah, I have no problem with that. Um, that better defines what, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I see in our licensure, I think it's called um, ringside position. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's. No, it doesn't. Does. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I see it, ring, it only says ringside yeah. position. It only says ringside yeah. position. Yeah. 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 Can you pull one? You have yours on? Yeah, I have it right here. Yes, it's ringside. So, maybe. Um, well. Yeah, I, I think it, there's no problem in adding it, but then does that open the door, you know, when, well, it wasn't really a ring, it wasn't really a cage, it, it, I, I don't know. We're, we're ringside physicians. Or, so. It's physicians? Or physicians working the events. Um, when, yeah. when, when is it not ring and when is it not cage side? I'm, I'm ballroom, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> But all right, you, you do what you think is. I think it's presumed. Yeah, so I think we would. Uh, let, let's hear from legal counsel. I think it's presumed. I think you could say ringside physicians, and I think that it'd be fine. I don't have a problem with putting a slash cage side. Um, I think um, everyone understands that it's the physicians that are that are actually associated with the event. These are the people that we're talking about here, right. not any you know personal physicians or anyone else who may have. Done the examinations previously before the event. Yeah, so so not to push back, um, but I think if we on our licensure we're called ringside physicians, it's probably not a good idea to call us by other things. So that, that's just my point there. So as long as it's duly noted, thank you. Yeah, and the ringside physician at the event, I don't think we're we're not even aware that this was. Who would be aware that this was even signed? Correct. We that, don't know. Exactly. That's why we right. need to be included. All right. So, um, any other comments about the entire document or any portion thereof? Okay. It's, 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 yeah. Motion to approve those two changes. I second the motion. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion carried. I think it's a, it's a clean document. Thank you um, to the legal counsels <laughs> for, for putting this together. It's, it's very, very, uh, very good, um, concise, conveys all the points we, are, that we intended to convey. Um, I don't know if we want to go offline on this, but just um, our experience with doing the, doing the uh, pre-fight physicals the day before I okay yeah yeah let, let's uh, let's let's talk about that in a moment I just want to have, have a wrap this up uh, by asking so now that we have a final draft approved yes can this be presented at the next uh, MSAC we meeting right we will on uh, May 21st we can present it to them for their approval May 21st May 21st it will be in Springfield oh, oh it's gonna be a meeting in Springfield yeah really yeah. <laughs> 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 For you. That's great. <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? Yeah, because we were overruled. No, I'm kidding. Right. We're just no, trying no, to include as many people as we can. That's so wonderful. We have the meetings all, you know, all the time all right. here. Makes it difficult for people from the other side to join us. So, so I assume you'll, I'll be, you'll be there. there. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to try to be. 11 a.m. Yeah. as well? Yes. 11 a.m. What date was oh. that again? May 21. And then assuming that it's approved, um, does it immediately go into effect? Yes. Or, okay. Very good. All right. So I think that item is closed, and um, so Dr. Lani wants to open up uh, and make some comments on a new agenda item. Um, 
I don't know if it necessarily has to be part of the meeting, but uh, you know, uh, Dr. Molinas and I uh, worked a fight where we did the uh, pre well, I did the pre fight examinations, and it was that, that went smooth. But the actual night of the fight was very chaotic in trying to gather up the fighters uh, for you know, the, the next weigh-in. You know, uh, so we did the, the pre-fight weigh-in, documented that. I did all the examinations. The following day, the fighters just assumed that they could just kind of stroll in whenever they wanted. They weren't there for the, the pre-fight exam, so we had to track them down, and it was, it was not easy. In fact, we didn't even get to all the fighters. Uh, I think we only probably got five, seven. We didn't yeah. get that many. It's certainly going to be a so we have to practice. organize that a little bit better on how we do it the following day and reevaluate all the fighters. So I thought because the, they all have to get a band, right? So we'll have to catch them at that one point, probably. Well, the fighters don't get a band; they check in. They check in. Yeah. So what you're saying is they you want to make it. Definite that they get reweighed. Yeah, they need. Uh, they, they need to get. As you saw, they were reluctant to. They were real reluctant, even though we kept telling them it's only a study. You know, it's not. It's not that's going to be uh, recorded anyway. I mean, they were reluctant to go. That's why we only have three people get. Like, I think we were also we were interrupting their, their normal kind of. They were in the zone. They, yeah, they were setting yeah. up. They were getting yeah. their gloves on, and we're walking up to them. We got to weigh you again, and they're just kind of focused on getting ready. It wasn't an hour or two before the fight because they were showing up like when they wanted to prior to the fight. So were you trying to do this to all of the fighters? or At least the weigh-in. Not necessarily the so, se a second weigh-in. Yeah, yes. So you were trying to do a second weigh-in for all the fighters? All of them. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think there's been no agreement on or, or, or requirement for that to occur. So it's my understanding at this point in time, the way we've left it is we are going to try to do the pre-fight physicals at the time of the weigh-in. If there's one or both physicians available to do that. If there's none available to do that, then and only then does it take place at the same date as the event, prior to the event. Um, as far as requiring fighters to, to be weighed the next day, we can't do that. They, they can volunteer to, we can ask them if they would be willing to do that. We can't require them to do that unless you have a specific concern about an individual fighter. That someone, you, were, you, you, you saw them pre-fight at the weigh-in, you were a little concerned that their weight cut was too much or you know, that their vital signs were you know, not appropriate, and you wanted to recheck that individual. Um, so I think that's where we are right now, but to try to require everyone to get reweight, we're, we're, we're not there yet. We, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not even, that's really not even um, an issue. I think the issue is even asking rounding them up, trying to find them. Mm -hmm. They're coming and going. At the weigh-in? Yeah. We, yeah. No, no at, the at, at the night of the fight. Yeah. So it's not even a question of us being able to ask them. We don't require anybody. We didn't require anybody. Right. But it was more, um, you know, the opportunity yeah. to be able to even yeah. ask them in, a, in, a, in an area where well, there wasn't a lot of yeah. chaos going on. Right. And they were already kind of getting in, in focused yeah. on the fighting. So, so the opportunity wasn't really there, which is kind of my concern is, is if we are going if we to, are gonna to that, try to do this well, it's setup. Good you, it's, it's good that you did that because it, it introduces one of the challenges. Yeah, so. yeah. Right. yeah I think logistically you're, you're absolutely right. There's got to be a better method. And uh, I think um, having the ability of maybe uh, you as the commissioner or whoever is present at that particular event or will, uh, gives a little bit more impact if one of you or both of you and one of the physicians who happens to be uh, assigned to that fight and to do it at a particular point where they um, just can't go off and do their prep and go into their little zone for prep, you know, preparing for their bout. So when you say they come in to pick up what wristbands or sign in, I mean there's a checkpoint. Check there's a sort of a checkpoint. Yeah. 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 So we can if we can sort of coordinate um, having a scale at this checkpoint, albeit they'll be enclosed, but maybe we can say, all right, minus two or three pounds or whatever. We can make an estimation of how much their clothes weigh. So because if we get them all at a checkpoint, we can see them. We know that they're all going to be going through this checkpoint. 
you as commissioners are going to be representing the fact that you know this is important, although it's volunteer, a voluntarily type of thing. Um, it would give them a little more emphasis on being more cooperative, and also we don't have to hunt them down once they, uh, you know, once they clear the checkpoint. So I would like to sort well, of depending on when they fight during the night, they're going to come in a little later. They're yeah, that's that's true. But those are the later. those are the later the fighters. As far as fighters, you know, the, the issue. Um, I'm trying to help on both sides here. The fighter coming, the minute he leaves his house, coming to the fight, he's he's in the zone. He's trying to concentrate on what he's doing, where he's going, you know, how he's his, his, his method of fighting. Is and hard. then once they get there, the trainers want them, whether they get. You know, rubbed down, or whether they um, they're, they're, um, they're um, just resting, or they're warming up, they 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 get right into that. And it, as you saw in those dressing rooms that day, I mean, it was pretty chaotic because in in the condition of the dressing rooms wasn't the, the greatest either. Yeah. So to take them from that, I think that's what the, the what well, the that's issue my was. point exactly. Do that. You would do it prior. I mean, at, for instance, Memorial Hall, they all check in. You know, at that one particular door. Right, they'll kind of check in and come through that one door. So they all have to come in through that one door, keep that scale there, and then after they do whatever they have to do, sign in. I don't know, get a wristband. I don't know whatever it is they're well, doing. Well, I just don't check in. They just check in. But they're the quarters. But they have to check in, right? They have to check now, in. Is there? Do, do we give them a specific time they have to be there? Because I mean, they obviously they all need to be there. But the prior to gives the, them a time to be at the fight. Prior to the rules yeah. meeting, right? So, that, so if they have a certain point that they have to be there by, that should, you know, and I look, we always have a straggler or two, but, um, you know, so, so logistically, I think if we were to mandate it, that's probably the place to do it as a check-in, I guess you could say at the rules meeting, but that's getting a little too late. And people mm -hmm. are already in the zone like you're talking about by then, but it is a point where they're all together. Um, doing it on a voluntary basis, we could do it at the same time to check in, um, <laughs> but it would have to be something where it starts becoming more and more expected. I mean, right now, if they don't get their pre-fights the day before, they, even though they're getting in the zone, they know that's one of the things they got to get through before they can well, get Well, they're getting weighed in the day before. Zone. To me, I right. think that would be the time to say to them, this would like to do tomorrow night, we depend right. on you. Sure. And, and do it you know, that way. Maybe we can get a handful yeah, of people. Good, that we that's can, a good suggestion. Make well, sure that they realize that the next yeah, day they're going to get them waiting. Waiting. Yeah, I mean, get yeah, you give them a warning, and then, or you give them a, you know, a heads up that this is what we'd like to do. Ideally, I mean, when we um, when we left this for the last meeting, um, we agreed to do the, the pre-fight physicals when we could the day before, and then we tabled the weather we were going to do day of fight weigh-ins and or eventually talk about doing urine specific gravities or some other, um, you know, sort of more objective testing and see if it, it corresponds to um, the, the, you know, the amount of weight they lost or and or put back on in that 24 hours. Um, so I think it's it's kind of three separate things, and it'd be logistics for all three of those that we that we'd have to work out. But we have to decide at some point. I mean, this is probably a good time to have a little bit of discussion. Do we want to talk about mandating a second weigh-in? Again, it's informational right now because we'd like to have an idea of how much weight are they putting back on in between day one and day two, just to have a spectrum. Um, and then decide if there's going to be anything a la um, California that we would want to do about it. If we're doing it on a voluntary basis, I think, you know, it's good. It's it's good. It sort of get lets them know that we're we're looking for that information. But from a from, from a technical standpoint, one of the downsides is the guys who are more likely to volunteer are the ones who haven't cut much weight. You know, the guys you're really trying to find who are at risk. I mean, they're probably not the ones jumping on the scale the next night um, unless you make them. So, so do we want well, to talk about it the against double weigh-ins? When you say you mandate it and you you get weighed in, and then the next night you get weighed in again, I got. I mean, 30 minutes after one of the weigh-ins we did, we did another weigh-in. Remember, we did it for the cameras, and these guys put on four. They put on uh, four and a half pounds on them within 30 minutes. You know, because when we weighed them, it was four and a half pounds, and they were in the same clothes. So, will they be? Um, we we'll hold it against them if uh, you get because well, some of these guys could put on six, seven pounds. Oh, no, we'll be putting on for more. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I was being well, well, that's the, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's the but, but that's the read. I mean, I, I would think if we're going to mandate it at least for now, because but we, we haven't decided what dangerous is yet, you know. Well, we, I hate we to see a fighter thinking we're going to hold it against them and then stop 
um, replenish in his body um, and then be in jeopardy the night of the fight. Well, we would have to. Well, that's one of the risks of the, you know that I think is the downside to what California is doing. I think there's a lot of upsides, but that's that's one of it. So they will be um, competing dehydrated. Right, there's going to be risk would, benefit to just about everything. Yeah. Okay, and we could we could spend a freaking hour here talking about risk benefit. We mandate it. I like that idea. You know, we we can tell them. You know, it's just a study. You know, we're kind of trying to, even ourselves, trying to educate ourselves as to what this all means. Uh, we're not going to use it against you if you have to even use those terms. Or, and, and we don't have to tell them what the weight is if they don't want to know what the weight is. I mean, we'll keep it uh, anonymous. Well, the fair said it would, it, it would be held against them, and that's why you said yeah, it. I totally understood. I mean, we'll have to let them know that it won't be, and they'll have to believe that it won't be. Right. Um, what if it was random? You know, yeah. Jack, right. It was a random? What if it was a, just a random, say you want to do 10 fighters every every show? And what if you have to weigh in and said we will be randomly choosing? Right. Then they don't know, and then you so don't hold That's basically it. what you did. Is that what you were saying? Do. I'm sorry. Kind of. It wasn't what we were saying, well, we no. Oh. We, we ended up doing that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, it ended up being there was, a random. It was random and voluntary. It was random voluntary, right. you know, right? No. So. Yeah. And, and, uh, all right, no no pun intended, I want to weigh in on this. Um, I think it is extremely <laughs> important that we not do any of this right now because there is no authority for us to be doing this. So we have to stop this. This is a study. No, no, no it's a study. I understand, but we have to stop it because we have no authority to impose this on the fighters. The, I, I, I mentioned a little earlier, I would say at this point, the only second physical exam of any kind, whether it's weighing them or examining them or taking vital signs that we can engage in if we did the, the pre-fight physical at the time of the weigh-in, is only on an individual or a few individuals that we have a specific concern about. And you know, so for example, if they were got low blood pressure and tachycardic and it looked like they lost a lot of weight, well, we want to recheck that the next day. But that doesn't apply to everyone. So there might be two or three people like that or none. So under those circumstances, it's very legitimate for us to want to recheck. But if we want to start getting into the business of doing a study, that's going to require meetings, discussions, planning, and possibly even something like an IRB approval, um, documentation, informed consent um, of a whole different kind. So we really need to stop this uh, for the time being. It's a great idea, and, and you know we've discussed it, and we might get there at some point in time. And you know, in that light, you know, just like Jen just mentioned about possibly making it random, there could be something we could speak with a specific promoter. You know, at your next three events, you know, can we agree with all your fighters to do this? You know, so that there are many ways that we can approach this, but right now we have no authority to do that, so we cannot do it, and we should not do it. So I think we can put this as an agenda item in the future, and if you want to actually propose some details of the study, and it's something that might even have to go before, um, well, no, I think we have legal counsel here, so I think it, it can it be. It would also have to go before it, the it, full board. Yeah, and it would have to go before the full board, so um, so right now we, you know, yeah, it's great ideas, and, and uh, believe me, I understand the potential value, but we, do, we, we have no authority to do it, so we can't do it. Who, who would have the authority, though? Would it be the MSAC? Actual it's actually in the regulations. Board, it, it is in the regulations that they're weighed one time, and if there are any issues, then the commission can request that they're weighed again or that they if, are right, subject if, to a physical yeah, examination right. if there are issues. So really, at this point, if we would, if we want to do it, it would have to be something that's purely on a voluntary basis until um, um, this can be reviewed at a later time, or you know, just like you suggested, Dr. Warner, until the specifics can be hashed out. Right. And then it goes in front of the board, then the board will decide. So you would make a recommendation to the board, then the board would make a determination. So, so eventually it would still be the same process of we would have the discussion here, we'd make a recommendation exactly. of, the details of the details to the board, and then, and then go forward from there. Right. Very similar to yeah. this informed consent. We got together, came up, you physicians got together, came up yeah. with the information, then um, now we will be taking it in front of the board for their approval. But I, but I think there are two issues, and I alluded to that. So it's not just whether it's lawful or we have the authority to do it, um, and that's through this process and the commission, but it's a research study. Yes. You know, so it's going to require an IRB approval, and, um, and, 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 you know, so that's a whole different process. So um, perhaps one could design a study 
get the IRB approval, then present that to the Medical Advisory Board. Then the Medical Advisory Board could perhaps help tweak that um, and then present it to the State Athletic Commission. So, yeah. I, I just want to uh, repeat what you said earlier. You said uh, if we can get a promoter to sort of encourage these fighters that are fighting on his or her program to do this particular weigh-in, then we can go ahead with it. So what I said was that one potential right. you know, avenue to achieve a study is to, rather than just making it across the board, is Correct. to work with one promoter. Okay. And so. yeah, so if that promoter right. then says that at his event or her, or event, her event that they they would like to see this occur, and they make it a requirement, you know, of their fighters. Very good. And the fighters agree with the promoter to do so. That's probably a shortcut to starting to starting starting to gather data. And then actually, if you gather data under that set of circumstances, that's going to make it more likely that you can achieve an IRB approval. All right. And, and in writing. Yeah. Right. And now right, the, very good. Yeah. And with the. I think, I think it also, and I'm not the expert on this because I don't do research, but I think it also depends on the intent of what you're doing with the data, whether it's more of quality review or whether there's actually intention, intent to publish um, or make public the data. It uh, changes the, the level of IRB uh, necessity or involvement. Um, so if, if our plan was to use it as our own, um, our own tool to decide what to do with the fighters and not take that anywhere outside of this, um, I think that gives us a lot more leeway. But if we wanted to publish this so other states would have the benefit of our data, then then that's more in that line. Probably would require a lot more groundwork. You know, it's probably a lot more beneficial too. But that'd be a big. Yeah, no, and just following up on the promoter, you know, I, you know, I I can't provide legal counsel, but. I, I don't even know if that is uh, allowable for a promoter to impose that on all their fighters. So, you know, again, that would have to come back to legal counsel. You know, can a promoter make that a requirement of all its fighters? So, we'll soon we'll find, we'll yeah. find out. That's something I'd have to look into. Yeah, you'll have to look into that. So, that's a great idea. As, as, a, as, a, as probably the best place to start to gather some data. But I would suggest, too, that, that you know, like, you know, um, Dr. Durkin just said, that per, perhaps there needs to be a purpose. You know, why are we gathering this data? You know, we want to learn, so, well, what are you trying to learn? What's your, you know, thesis, hypothesis, um, utility of the data, you know, or proposed utility of the data? And obviously, as you're gathering and you look at the data, you might learn something different. That can help guide the purpose of a larger study. Yeah, and I mean, my my own my own preference or bias would be when we wait and if we decide to do it, I would like to do it in conjunction with at least one other objective measure, like the urine specific gravity or something like that, so we can have um, you know we could be measuring several things at the same time and see which one correlates with the the biggest delta. Um, just in terms of weight regain in the 24 hours, and then we can correlate that with weight loss and all the other things that other people have done. But have a, you know, it'd, it'd be nice if we eventually came out of this with a objective measure of okay, aha, uh -huh, your your specific gravity was greater than 1.037. That almost always correlates to more than a 10 or 12 percent weight loss. That's that's our no fight the next day cutoff. Uh, that would be a great thing to get out of something like this, but you don't, we have no idea if that's actually what we would get out of it or not. We might find like other studies that even at the even at the highest level of dehydration, there's still no great correlation. You know, so, but it would be nice if we could at least prove it once and for all, and again have something where there's just it's a little less subjective on our part. Where eventually you come up with a tool that we just say you're under this. You're you're good to go from a hydration standpoint. You're over that, and not. Um, that would be that would be awesome. But I think that's about ten years away. All right. I think we're we're done with that discussion, um, and I think we're done with uh, the meeting. Any other issues, burning issues that anybody wants to bring up? 
we will have um, three listening sessions in May um, because we are uh, looking into changing certain uh, uh, provisions in our regulations. And so we actually we are opening it up to members of the public. Um, you are all invited to attend. Um, the first one is May 1st. It's here. Uh, the second one is May 21st in Springfield. And the third one is May 25th here. And the purpose of the meeting is just to allow members of the public, promoters, fighters, licensees, an opportunity to um, provide us with some suggestions as to what they would like to see changed in our regulations, how they think that, um, what they think we can improve on. And so I think that it'd be great if um, you all would consider coming to one or all three of those sessions. <laughs> is each session going to be different or is it no, three of the same it's, sessions? it's the same. Okay. It's the same. So May 1st, 21st, and 25th. Yes, the, right. 20, the 21st is in Springfield. Right. The other right. two are right. here. Other two in Boston. Do you know where it's Springfield yet? The, the, college. the college. The college, technical. the technical community college. Okay. Yeah. I can send you all the yeah. information yeah. if you'd like. 